Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 22nd, 2022, occurred on 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a tropical cyclone to be forming off the coast of Africa over the next several days. Could that affect the Lesser Antilles and the Windward Islands? And a look at just how bad the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season could be and what to expect. Jumping straight into everything, taking a while look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. We noticed that we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, we have pretty strong tropical waves that are getting ready to emerge off the coast of Africa. This lead wave right here has already emerged off the coast. And then we have a secondary wave right here. This actually looks to be part of a mesoscale convective system moving westward, basically just a big complex of thunderstorms. And this will be emerging over the waters here over the next day or two. And this will likely be the primary focus of Genesis over the next several days for any potential tropical system, as uh, both of these systems will be moving westward at a pretty low latitude over the next couple of days. And in the East Pacific, we have Tropical Storm Celia, which is expected to become a hurricane on Thursday. This should have no impacts to land as it stands at the moment. Brief overview of the Tropical Pacific. Again, we only have Tropical Storm Celia. Uh, blast became a remnant circulation a few days ago now. Celia is expected to become a hurricane while moving generally towards the west-northwest, but no impacts to land are expected at this time. And in the Tropical Atlantic, everything remains pretty quiet for now. However, we do suspect that development chances will be introduced here. And the reason for this is, like I talked about, we have this tropical wave that will be emerging off the coast of Africa over the next uh, 24 hours or so. The lead wave right now is helping to moisten the environment ahead of it. And then the secondary wave that is over here will be diving southwestward and emerging into the waters here. With a big ridge of high pressure to the north, this should allow for a storm to generally head off towards the west here. And this is the area where development chances should be continued to be monitored anywhere from just east of, or just east of the island chain here to just west of the island chain. There's a possibility that we could have a tropical cyclone moving through this area that's been highlighted over the next several days. This includes Trinidad, Tobago, uh, Barbados, St. Lucia, you know, Dominica, St. Martin even potentially could be dealing with a system, although I doubt it will get that far north, but we will have to monitor that. Looking at the brief overview of the models before we take an in-depth look, the 0Z GFS did not continue to form anything uh, out of this system. However, uh, the European and CMC both uh, developed this into a tropical cyclone, with the CMC being the strongest, even going as far as potentially bringing this to near hurricane strength once this passes the islands. I, I don't really think that's a highly reasonable expectation as of right now, but I think it's going to be a blend somewhere between the European and the CMC solution. So let's go ahead and talk about all that. If you look here at the GFS, this is the 60 run valid for uh, 8 a.m. this morning. We noticed that, again, here's Tropical Storm Celia out here in the model. And again, basically, this is, again, just the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet. So if we really want a big uh, time storm, we want these darker oranges and reds here concentrated in a nice bundle. So if we move this forward here, this is basically what we want to look for. Right here is what we want, this nice little concentrated area of spin. Now on the GFS, again, this is the 60 run. Uh, we notice that again, for the next 30 hours, there's nothing down here in the deep tropics, but here is that wave that is beginning to emerge. And we'll continue to watch that future over the next couple of days. And eventually here on the GFS, you notice that this, this wave gets over here into the central main development region by Wednesday-ish time frame, and nothing's developing on this. And one of the main reasons for that is because it is underdoing the amount of convection that is currently out there across this region right now. And that's going to be a big factor because if it's underdoing convection, it potentially may not be able to develop a system because of the lack of any thunderstorms. And, but we notice that the 200 millibar wind environment, if we look here on the ensemble GFS here, the uh, pattern for this time is actually, it's marginally favorable. Uh, we will have a tropical upper trosopheric trough over here. So this will basically an upper level low uh, that will be providing some shear to the north, but in down here across the south, generally speaking, uh, we have pretty uniform wind environment and a potential environment that could actually support a system developing and by the time we get into Saturday, an upper-level anticyclone develops uh, nearer to the islands. 
So on the zero Z G or on the zero Z Euro, we kind of noticed that we have a little bit of a stronger wave. It actually does kind of coalesce into a system, although the operational run does not develop a, a well-organized system, but there is still a system that crosses at very low latitudes here. And if we take a look at the uh, ensemble EPS here and take a look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure at this time, we notice that there actually is, this. this is the 60 run, so this is the latest. We actually notice here that by Tuesday of next week, we have a potential storm that will be forming down here in the uh, the model here. And this could, again, potentially be an indicator that we could have something forming. Again, the GFS ensembles here, the 60 run of the GFS ensembles are still kind of potent, does have uh, an area of concentrated, you know, low pressure down here. And again, just kind of reiterating what the Europeans saw. Again, this is the uh, zero Z run of the Euro, but we notice all of these tracks here of potential storm locations. And again, most of them have it crossing somewhere between Trinidad and Guadalupe at this point. So uh, this could be something to continue to monitor as we go down the pipeline. Uh, as of right now, I would give this about a 10% chance of development. Again, this area of low pressure expected to emerge off the coast here. I would give this a 10% chance of development before the islands and maybe about a 15 to 20% chance after crossing the islands. Uh, this number will probably increase over the next couple of days. Uh, but again, it's just something to monitor right now for the islands, including, including Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, uh, you know, Guadalupe, even all, all the way up the island chain. So just something to monitor there. All right. Switching gears here real quickly, what to expect for the remainder of the season besides just these couple of systems? Well, the city sea surface temperature anomaly pattern coming off the North, North American Multimodal Ensemble forecast, basically just a collection of big uh, climate uh, you know, forecasting systems. Again, in the uh, Atlantic here, we have a very warm pattern here, this kind of horseshoe shape, very favorable basically for tropical cyclone activity across the deep tropics. We have a relatively cool subtropical Atlantic, just slightly above the long-term average. And then this warm pattern off the far North Atlantic here in the high seas. This basically goes to suggest that we'll be seeing an amplifying of a, a ridge over here, basically a big area of high pressure. This high pressure it will be kind of situated over the North Atlantic, preventing many storms from actually recurving. That's not as likely, although it's still possible. And that kind of drives storms further towards the west here. And that's kind of why, once again, I think there will definitely be that shot of increased activity across the tropical Atlantic and even the, the Gulf of Mexico to, to that extent as well. And even, you know, Florida and the entire Gulf Coast states are at at least some risk. And then, of course, down here in the Caribbean, including all of the islands down here and even Belize and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula does have a pretty fair shot. I would say maybe about 40 to 45% odds of seeing a significant hurricane uh, coming through that area. And then certainly in the Gulf of Mexico, I also believe that there's a very significant chance, probably over 50%, I would say, especially for Florida, uh, over 50% in portions of the, the northeast uh, coast here, uh, you know, of the, the Gulf Coast states. And then off the coast here of the east coast of the United States, including the northeast here, does at least have some risk for some tropical cyclone impacts. Um, not as high, uh, you know, but there is still a risk. Again, it's kind of been a, a long time if you, you know, don't really count uh, – on reef from last year it's kind of been a long time since we've had a, a significant northeast threat and, and there definitely could be that this year again in the northeast they're uh, to be quite frank they're not as well prepared for tropical systems as you know some of the the gulf coast states are uh, and that certainly is worrisome because if you get a you know even a, a category one like Henri was and still caused a lot of damage and uh, you know fortunately Henri did weaken and whatnot but still this poses you know quite some significant concerns going forth in the season so if you live up down the east coast here if you live in the Gulf Coast and of course the islands you certainly need to be preparing and everybody else should continue to monitor the progress of how this hurricane season goes and of course I will continue to monitor that as well and bring you the latest and greatest information on that. All right. That being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.